Welcome back. I'm Sam Hedden, and this is Now You Know Quarantine Style. Today we have a very special guest. I'm very lucky that I get to say I've known her for 13 years. So the before TikTok, Snapchat, BuzzFeed, her name's Kat Curtis. She's best known for her TikTok account with over 1 million, that's right, 1 million followers, not to be confused with her cat, who has more followers than she does. So I'm going on a date with Jayo! What's up, girl? Dang, you cute. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, Denny's was the nice place you were talking about. Yeah, Denny's! Can I get a bite of that? Yeah, sure. <gasps> I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. Ooh, look at that cake walk away from me. So the date with J.O. is going super well. He shared his pancake with me, and who does that? Wait a sec. Is that J.O.? Is he stiffing me on the bill? Here's the bill, dude. <gasps> he left me with the bill! Oh, wait. He also left me with the valet ticket. He leaves me with the bill? I steal his freaking car. Bye! Yeah. Thanks for the car, J.O.! How to get free drinks. I grew up in a small town about an hour away from the Twin Cities and then I moved to the Twin Cities for college and then I stayed in uh, St. Paul after college and I moved to LA because I got an opportunity to do an internship at BuzzFeed. Am I gonna stay in LA? Probably for a very long time. Right now it's just like the people i don't love the rent but i love the people here that do comedy because one of the things i ran into in minnesota was that i love the comedy community there but uh i couldn't find a way to get paid and <laughs> you kind of hit a point in your life where it's going to be hard to find other people to be just as passionate because i would shoot my I, I was really intense about how i shot things i wanted things to be really funny and you have to be around people with that other level of dedication. And if you have no way to like pay them or no way to get like, it's just, it's not, there comes a point where it's just a hobby. Like I would be, it would have been just like a glorified hobby for me. And I wanted more. I wanted to do the business side of it. I wanted to make money doing it. And I wanted to see what it'd be like. So you kind of have to move to a place where you can be compensated because nothing makes you try harder than knowing that you have to earn your paycheck. And uh, so I moved to LA for the internship at BuzzFeed and I kept doing my online stuff. Mm -hmm. And I do get paid to put up posts sometimes and it's pretty cool. There's been months I've made more on TikTok than I do at my day job and there's a lot of months that isn't true, but now it's just like I consistently make pretty okay money and that's pretty cool. And um, there, it's not just the money, it's the challenges that come with like some of those videos I have to make. When we first met, what did you originally want to do with your life? Or uh, did you have any idea? I thought I wanted to get married and have kids, to be honest, for a while. I thought I'd be really good at that. And I thought I wanted that. You never know what the future brings because I'd love to like adopt a kid someday, but it wasn't my only goal at the time. And I have all this like energy. So I thought I wanted to do that at the time. And then I wanted to, I thought I wanted to write. I thought I wanted to be a writer. Like I kind of did that for a little while. And then I was like, oh, I want to be a comic artist. So I did that. I drew comics for like, like student newspapers and stuff. I took a video production class for whatever reason, and I really liked it. And I w was really motivated to do more of it. And it was just like it kind of combined the writing 
of like that I did and the visual stuff of the comics and then it was a lot easier than drawing comics to be perfectly honest and a lot more fun so I leaned into that and I liked that I could tell stories with video so I became a journalist and I did that for a long time at Town Square Television and I really liked it but then I was doing that and I was actually doing fairly well I think I got nominated for like two like Midwest Emmys wow but something was missing I was doing this and I was like I like this but I started filming comedy sketches in my free time because I felt like I needed to like I needed to do that it was like really important for me to do that one night I just kind of had an existential crisis where I was like, oh my God, I want to do this forever, but I have a feeling my friends aren't going to be into this forever. You know, they're going to want to have families and stuff, and this is all I want to do, so I need to go somewhere where this can be all I want to do and all other people want to do. So I was like, I need to make money doing this. So I went on the internet, and I saw BuzzFeed at an internship, and I shot a couple more videos that matched their style. I applied, and I got it. I packed up the apartment I lived in for years with a roommate and sold and donated all my stuff. And I drove across the country with my sister. She was nice enough to get in the car with me. Uno was in the car too, my cat. <laughs> um, he was on vet medication, so he was real chill. Uh, <laughs> and I just went. And it was just this drive from deep on the inside. So I didn't know I wanted, and then even in LA, like I didn't, no, I was going to be on camera. That was something I didn't necessarily want. I think deep down I did, but there was a lot. I just didn't think I could do it. I just mm -hmm. saw people that were on camera and then I looked at myself and I just saw a huge disconnect. And, right. and then one day it occurred to me that this didn't matter, but this did. So that's when I started putting myself on camera because I also would get frustrated because I would direct other people because I started doing a little bit of like I was doing writing and directing and I direct other people and I'd be like unhappy with like right. their perform performance or I'd be like right. I wish they would have done it this way and I'm like well what if I did it because I know exactly what I'm thinking and so I started doing it and it worked out and now I obviously like my face is all over my TikTok. That's right. Well, actually I'm behind camera more often than you think. Cause some of my favorite pieces are ones where I'm like narrating it and like telling other right. people that I pop in for a second, but <laughs> I'm, I'm on camera now. And it's just like, it's interesting to be like, yeah, there was even like a year and a half ago, I was still trying not to be that. Do you think that maybe it's that kind of that internal pull and struggle that makes you like TikTok as much as you do. Like you get to have a little bit of each part, like getting to be in front and a little bit behind. Yeah, I, I think it's just, it's easy too. Like, well, cause I can shoot it on my phone is like my favorite thing about it. So now I figured it would be a good time to do this cause we'll make sure there's a resurgence of your viral video, but your current, your most current one that seems to have uh, struck people as interesting was how to get free food from the mall. God. How to get free food at the mall. Thank you. That's the video that helped me get to that that whole series helped me get to a million. <laughs> how, but how did you? Why I've known you for some time. I got to Why? What gave you this idea? How many? I don't. I guess like this is the video that's gonna ruin the internet because I've never. This is the reason I usually don't like. I don't get asked to get interviewed a lot, which is great. I love that I get a million followers. And no one cares about me. I love this so much. Oh. A bunch of nine-year-olds do, but like <laughs> no media outlet really cares about me. And I love it because I'm like, I never get hit up for like interviews. Like you think in a million followers, like, oh, you get hit up for stuff all the time. I'm like, no, I really don't. And I love it. Um, uh, so that series 
like, so that video, I was at the mall. Mm-hmm. I was actually, like, I wasn't planning to shoot anything that day. I was with a bunch of friends. I had an out-of-town friend in town who's a TikToker, and I was just introducing her to my friends. Right. And I got the idea. It took 10 minutes to shoot, and I put it up. It started to go viral, and I put my phone away because I had a friend in town. And I actually didn't really look at it that much. It was like I was checking. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to hit a million. Put my phone away because her and I were, like, cooking lunch. And also Kobe died, like, the day after I posted that video. Ah, So we were a little bit more focused on other things. But I rechecked it, and it had, like, a couple million views. And then I got hit up by, like, uh, Daily Mail, which is a huge outlet. And they wanted permission to use the footage. And I said yes. And then I got hit up by Fox. And then I got hit up. Okay, so how it kind of works is, like, I got hit up by Cantors. And it's kind of confusing if you're not in this world. They hit me up, and they're like, some media companies, they didn't say who, want to use your clip. So I knew it was going to get shared by a bunch of different ones. So it's like Fox shared it, Daily Mail shared it, like this huge India outlet Mm -hmm. did, some huge Asian, and I apologize for not knowing the name. It's just like not outlets I'm checking because I don't live in those countries. Um, shared it and it was just really wild. I liked her as like cheeky vlogger. I'm like, I'm not a vlogger at all. I don't know if I'm cheeky either. I don't know uh, what that means. You're you're cheeky. You're okay. Definitely, what does that mean? <laughs> cheeky. Um, but so I don't I don't personally have TikTok, but I'll look at the content and I'll check it out. Apparently, one of the people you took some food from found you and stole some of your food. Can you say a little bit about yeah. how that went? Yeah, to- we're friends now. Um, <laughs> now, now. Yeah, well, it's just like we didn't like really, well, obviously we didn't know each other. And yeah, obviously, like towards the end, like he didn't obviously break into my apartment. Like that was... <laughs> Like, we were doing a bit by then, but it's some of, like, my best directing and writing, and, like, we all had to talk that out. Um, But, yeah, just, like, we saw an opportunity to grow, because he is actually a music person, and I am a comedy person, and the growth we were seeing from, well, after I posted the initial video, the growth I saw was insane, and I was in talks with an agent at the time but he was really honest with me that my following wasn't quite where it needed to be but he loved my comedy so when I saw the growth from the first video it gave me an idea to really run with it and I also like my friend John Moss was like really encouraging about me continuing with that series in a way and Mm -hmm. J.O. who was who is a musician who just dropped this song called Guacamole that got sponsored by Chipotle he was looking to grow too because you can get more deals if you have more followers so right. we all worked together and we had a lot of fun well that's good i mean it, in the industry that you're in the industry that i'm in it's definitely about connections and who you know like if there's one thing i've learned it's more about who you know not what you know and then you collaborate you work with people and it seems like that's how that works Today we're going to talk about Takis. Uh-huh, talk about Takis. And by talk, I mean scream. So I'm really hoping Takis doesn't underfill their chip bags, because honestly, Takis is a brand I trust. That we trust. Takis are homeboy. They be fuego. Takis, how could you? This bag isn't even half full. If this bag of Takis fits into that bag of Takis, I'm going to be real upset. Not only did the second bag fit in the Takis, but there's so much extra room. If this isn't proof that all chip companies are underfilling our chip bags, I don't know what to do for you. Maybe you deserve underfilled chip bags. I know I deserve better. Fries look underfilled! 
So I got a second thing of fries. Which also looked underfilled. But I'm a person of science. You're in big trouble now. This entire thing of fries fit into this thing of fries, and now I'm mixed sad. And they paid more than two dollars for each of these underfilled things of fries. I feel Mick ripped off. McDonald's? Why would you Mick do this to us? Who Mick hurt you? McDonald's? You're Mick dead to me. If this doesn't make you Mick realize that McDonald's is Mick underfilling their fries, I can't Mick help you. And yeah, but up. Except for like a couple of people, like no one was horribly mean to me about my comedy, but you can kind of tell when you talk to people, it's like, oh, you think you're going to make it in comedy? Like you can be talking to someone, they don't say it, but you can feel how they feel about you. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I'd receive negative comments here and there. And then it was just like, yeah, everyone has a hard time in like middle school, high school. I had like a rough time with being bullied. And I think in my mind, getting to a million was saying to a lot of people that maybe were mean to me and stuff that I'm like, you didn't defeat me. So getting to a million was really important to me um, for reasons outside of like helping me like lock in an agent. And once I hit it, it's just like, I felt this weight lifted off because it was also like, I used to watch Vine. I used to watch Vine every night, if you remember the app. Mm. And I wanted, I wanted to be that funny. And to me hitting a million on TikTok meant no one could ever tell me I wasn't funny. I'm like, there's no fucking way I got here. <laughs> I'm not funny so none of you can ever because I think that would always be the most devastating when people would tell me I wasn't funny like it still bothers me when people do it and it's just like there's no way I'm not there is no way and so that just felt I just felt this weight lifted I'm at the 99 cent store Hi, 99 cent store I'm gonna make a Halloween costume only from things I bought at the 99 cent store Lego so we're looking at snacks these are all the chips for my costume first I gotta empty the chip bag here we go. I'm gonna tape my Lay's to this paper and make a skirt. A lace skirt. Oh my god. Look at this Lay's skirt that I made for my Halloween costume. All on my own. Look at this delicious skirt. Now to make the top. I cut and tape the bags together. So this is my Halloween costume. So the idea is that it's like an evening dress. It's an evening snack. That's very cute. That looks so good. You are literally a snack. I'm a snack. I'm actually a snack. Weird food combo. DiGiorno pizza covered in candy corn. Candy corn. It's a DiGiorno Halloween pizza. In a little bit pizza. This looks so good. Mmm. This is amazing. The candy corn cake plus the DiGiorno cake. I think the reason candy corn was sent to this earth is to be put on DiGiorno pizza. So today we're gonna find out if Lucky Charms underfills their cereal boxes. Now some of you might be thinking, Cat, you're the chip lady. You're supposed to yell about chips. Reason one, I'm a little bit worried that the company that makes these chips right there is gonna come after me. Reason two, my doctor told me to lay off the salt, but I love salt. Here we go. Why put the cereal in a bag of plastic when you could line the box with plastic? Box two. These two boxes fit into this one plastic Lucky Charms thing, whatever. Also, this ratio of regular Lucky Charms to Marshmallow Lucky Charms should be considered a crime. You should be ashamed of yourself. Like when it comes to other things, I do want to start writing longer things because my agent's been really encouraging. Also, TikTok isn't the be all end all. Right. So I'm trying. I'm figuring out a way right now. I'm starting to focus on YouTube a little bit while I continue to focus on TikTok. And like, mm -hmm. I put out my first like real YouTube video yesterday. It's not doing great, but I'm really proud of it. Um, I have like 3,000 subscribers on YouTube without like me doing anything there. So I'm going to like work on growing it while continuing to do my TikTok. And um, I'm excited for it. And I just want to think a little bit longer form because, you know, it's important too. But I'm not going to lose who I am as a TikToker, obviously. But TikToker first, I want to grow on YouTube because right now, like, I get brand deals through TikTok, but I can't monetize, like, right. you can on YouTube. So if I post something, I don't necessarily make money off of it. Well, good. Um, that means you can post this once this is, once this is all yeah. edited and stuff. You can just throw that out there. So that would be good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I see what you're doing. But on YouTube, if I had enough subscribers, if I posted something, I would actually make money. Right. So I would like that ability. I'd like to be able to put some comedy out there and know that like if it performs well, I'd make money. And also on top of that, I put comedy out that a larger audience saw. So that's why I'm interested in like growing on YouTube. And like, I have these longer form ideas that I'd actually put on TikTok, but then I could put together on YouTube because they'd be like separate TikToks, but they could be looped all, all together. Right. 
So that's something I'm working on right now. I was going to ask what you, what your plans were for like in the future, but you pretty much kind of answered that for the most part. So rock on. Yeah. I'm on Omegle asking people what their favorite vines are. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. I know you. Ah, I forget your name. I'm Kat. How do I know you? You definitely don't know me. Oh, my bad. Definitely seen you on my For You page. Oh, probably. The one where she honks and the grandma, like, throws the milk. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that vine. It's so good. I forgot. And you brought that back into my life. Thank you. I'm going to watch that ten times tonight. If you take one of the condiments out, like the ham, you'll find this. It's this little raised stud. It makes the ham look higher up. But if I push it back down and put it back in, oh my god, look how much lower it is. That's so rude. And the stud isn't just under the ham. It's under the cheese. It's not under the crackers in the cookie, but that doesn't matter because you don't go to the Lunchable for the crackers. You go in for the meat and the cheese. And that's the two things on purpose, under film. It is a crime. It is a crime. It is a crime. It is a crime. I don't own a whisk, but I needed one for cooking, so I broke into my neighbor's apartment and stole his. I know it was dangerous, but hey, it was a whisk worth taking. Police, you're under arrest! For what, stealing? No. For making a terrible pun! Okay, it wasn't that bad. No, ma'am, it was very bad. That makes sense, let's go. Thank you for tuning in. This is Sam Hedden with producer Andy Watson. Huge thank you to Kat. She is a phenomenal person. There you go. She's absolutely great. And I just want to say thank you to all of you followers out there who are watching these videos and being safe and staying healthy. Stay at home. Do what you need to do. This is now thank you. Kat Curtis. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> or you can do it your way first, and then you can do it my way. Oh, shut up. <laughs>